Good morning. Welcome to Reiki Wednesday. I'm Jamie Lee of Animal Bonds. Thank you for joining me this morning. If you're watching live, please let me know with a comment or a little like or something. Um, and if you're watching the replay, thank you. As always, feel free to share the replay. Um, I appreciate any sharing or comments that you might make. And if you're watching the replay and you have a question or a comment, feel free to put that down in the comment section. And next week I'll check all those before I go on for Reiki Wednesday. So I have been researching for a book that I'm working on. And it's about the healing power of the human-animal bond. And I found out some really interesting things through this research. And one of the things is that trauma um, tends to stay with the body unless we release it somehow. And former traumas, and it doesn't have to be anything huge, but anything that scares us, that puts us in that fight or flight mode, anything like that, that we experience, the first time we experience it with an activity and we don't release it with the body, it stays with us and it comes out in sensations and behavioral patterns and that type of thing. And researchers have even <clears throat> discovered that things that happen to us before we're born, when we're in the womb, that happen to our mother, those kind of experiences <clears throat> can leave an effect with us in our behaviors and our sensations. So what do I mean by that? Basically, it means, um, you know, like, the first time you ever had to stand up in front of the class in elementary school. Uh, maybe it was third grade and you had to get up and spell a word or do a math problem. If that didn't go well, uh, if the other kids laughed at you, if, if something like that happened, that kind of trauma can stay with you. And that means the next time today, if you had to get up and do a presentation in front of your boss or your peers, your coworkers, some big presentation for work, that feeling may come back, that little bit where you're nervous, you're worried, oh, don't let me be laughed at, don't let me flop this. Um, so those are some things, that's what we mean when we talk about the trauma <clears throat> still stays in your sensation and your behavior. So it doesn't have to be big. Good morning, Michelle, thank you for joining me. So what do we do about <clears throat> that? Because, I mean, we're bombarded with things that make us feel a little nervous throughout the day, activities. We go through our life with that. And it doesn't have to affect us. We just need to learn how to release it. And that's where the healing power of the human-animal bond comes in. Because we can look to animals as our teachers. And they're more than willing to teach us. So the first thing we have to do that animals teach us is move. If we have something happen, um, you know, you're asking someone out, you have a big presentation at work, whatever it is that you know it's gonna make you nervous, you need to move. And if you look at animals, I've, I've got animals all around me here today. Sometimes, I mean, they get along, they love each other, yes, and once in a while, maybe we have a little spat and they get after each other and then it's all over. And what happens at that moment? They shake. Everybody just shakes it off and then they go about their business. They're releasing that pattern of trauma. They're letting it go. So, we can do the same thing. And maybe you're not gonna be standing in front of your coworkers and shaking, but <clears throat> go for a walk, go for a run. When you know you have these moments coming up, we don't always know it, but when we do, then you can go for a walk, you can go for a run, you can dance, <clears throat> movement. Even if you go somewhere before the speech in the bathroom or something and just move, you know, move your body a little bit to release that nervous energy and that pattern. You want to get rid of that. <clears throat> the second tool that animals teach us is to feel the emotion. You know, in our society, emotion is considered a weakness sometimes. Oh, they're emotional. But emotions are far from that. And animals teach us that. They're very clear. You know when they like someone. You know that they love you. You know when they're scared. You know when they're mad. 
um, they make no bones about it. They show you the emotion. And we have to learn that it's okay to say, you know what, I'm really nervous about this speech. Or, and to recognize that you are having these emotions and not try to shove them down like we've been taught to do, unfortunately, a lot in society. Emotions are not bad. They're not good or bad. They are just emotions. <clears throat> and when we recognize that, and just like the animals do, and make it very clear, oh, I'm nervous, okay, because I have this big speech. Well, let me just go for a little walk. Let me just get some time alone so I can shake this off, or whatever you have to do to get rid of that, the movement. Okay? So don't be afraid of the emotions and don't be ashamed of them. They're nothing to be ashamed of. And the next one is don't judge them. And that's another tool that we learn from the animals, non-judgment. So a lot of times when we feel these emotions coming on, we feel this fear, we feel, why are we always doing the same pattern? And we don't understand it. We judge ourselves, I must be bad. And then a lot of times, because we can't deal with that, we will take and we cloud those feelings with, we push them down and we use what? Drugs, alcohol, sweets, we overeat, we, we use relationships, all kinds of things that are not in our best interest because we're using it to push down the emotions that we judge to be bad and we've been told are bad. So, Animals don't make those judgments. As I said before, if they're happy, you know it. If they're upset with you, you know it. If they want something, you know it. I have a 17-year-old dachshund. When he wants to eat, I know it. He lets me know. So we need to be like the animals and not judge our emotions. We need to be aware of them. Oh, what is this? I, I'm nervous. What am I nervous about? I'm nervous that I have this presentation and you know what, I haven't spent the time that I should have preparing for it, so maybe I need to go work on that right now. That's what we look for with those clues. The emotions are our clues. We don't need to judge ourselves. We don't need to harm ourselves because we're feeling emotions. Good morning, Chris. Thanks for joining. Thank you for the likes and the hearts going by. Um, so the fourth tool that I want to share with you is one of the most important, and that is about forgiveness. You know, animals, if we look to our animals, for the most part, they are very forgiving. Once in a while, you find a couple that once they get in a fight, they don't forgive each other. But even animals, when they have had a spat, they forgive. And I want to tell you about Tulip. Tulip, and I've probably talked about her before, um, she was a child that had been at the shelter for four years living in a cage and before that she was probably a backyard dog, very neglected. By the time she came to me, she was 12 years old. She was terrified, absolutely terrified. Uh, she came out in this backyard and she would not even come near me. I couldn't get her in the house, I couldn't get her to come near me for two weeks. It was a slow process. But once I broke down her walls that she had put up, and once she decided she could trust me, she opened her heart to everyone that came to this house. And yes, she would meet you at the door barking, but it was only because you had to give her attention. This is a dog who did not trust people when she came who hadn't been treated well by people, who had been ignored. I don't, I don't know her whole history, but I know her life had not been good up to that point. And yet, <clears throat> she did not look at me, at first she did, for a couple of weeks. Like, maybe I can't be trusted. But then when she found out I can trust her, she opened her heart again to everyone. And she forgave what she had been through. She wasn't living back in the past she was living in the moment. And her moment was really, really good. And she had four beautiful years with me and I had four beautiful years with her. Lived to 16. So <clears throat> that was a huge lesson for me to watch her transform and open up her heart and trust again. We need to learn how to do that too. 
to let go of all those things that we hold on to from the past. We need to shake those off. We need to open up our hearts and learn to trust. You know, Rumi, he was a 13th century poet. And he said, here, I wrote it down. The cure for the pain is in the pain. So, what he meant by that is just being in the moment, going through it, recognizing it exists. And I'm not talking necessarily about physical pain. I'm talking about the emotional pain that we all go through. To be present with it, recognize it exists, don't judge it, and work through that to layer it off. And that's kind of what I do in a Reiki session. I help people remove those layers um, that have stayed close to them so the trauma can go. It's like an onion. You just peel it away a layer at a time. So I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Michelle and Chris and anybody else up there that I don't see. Sometimes I don't see all the names. I want to thank you for being with me this morning. And please, as always, share the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. So let's go out today and, as always, let's walk gently on this earth. Let's do no harm. And today especially, let's celebrate the fact that animals in our, are in our life and that we understand the healing power of the human-animal bond. Namaste.